Hey, what's up, everybody? So tonight I'm going to be working on finishing up the Rogue bass guitar here. So this guitar in particular had been sitting in storage roughly 24 years. Uh, thankfully, it didn't have any strings on it, so it wasn't putting any tension on the neck. Um, got some marking on it. Uh, obviously, lots of fingerprints. It needs a, a really good cleaning. I'm going to oil the fretboard, clean the frets, do anything else that it might need. Um, I recently put a new nut in. Um, this one here was quite shot and wore down really bad, so I just installed that recently. There's another video that I have you can check out. I'll link down in the description where I changed one of these. Uh, it just happened to be in a fender base, but I'll send that and... Uh, put a link there in the bottom so that you guys can see that if interested. So for this one, one of the first things we want to do before we get too deep into it is we want to oil the fretboard. And I, want, I like to oil the fretboard first because I don't like coming back after cleaning it and using oil on here. So what I use to oil the fretboard is mink oil. So being it's rosewood, you want to be careful with harsh chemicals and things. And mink oil is perfect because it all rubs in, basically disappears. Put a little dab on each fret. You can just use your finger. Um, you know, if you really want, you could use some rubber gloves, but I don't mind. It'll wash off easy. A little bit of mink oil on the rosewood. And then come back. Obviously, I'm going to use the same finger. And rub this into the rosewood and as the mink oil rubs into the rosewood it's okay for it to be a little thick um, you might be able to see that it's starting to get some good shine to it um, we want to leave this on for a little bit to soak into the wood um, having the mink oil soak into the rosewood is going to make it last it's not going to be greasy or anything in the end because once it gets worn and soaked into the wood um, it's just going to give it that good longevity that the rosewood needs to last a while. After it's all rubbed in good, I'm going to go along the edges. Let's get a little bit on the outside edges just to seal the wood. Gives it lots more life. All right, here I got one of my secret ingredients. I use Scratch X. You have to be very gentle with it. You don't need a lot. But it works pretty good. Let me grab myself an applicator pad here. By applicator pad, if you don't know, I am referring to one of these. Lot, lots of times using for waxing cars. Again, I do use some things that are used for waxing cars. Reason being is waxing cars is lacquer. A lot of guitars use lacquer. So when you're working on a really nice paint job on a guitar and you've got some minor scratches to work with, there's nothing wrong with using something that's designed for automobiles. Because this here is going to help. As i shown, there are some scratches in it. I cannot expect this to take out all of them. Definitely cannot expect it to take out all of them. But even if it makes a slight bit of difference, I will be happy with that. So we're going to add this on here. We're going to let this sit for a minute. Flip her over. Catch some of these bigger areas where we have some scratches on the top. I don't need to get any on the pickups or the neck. Just focus on the bigger areas of the color. 
or black, the lack there of color. But I'll get this on here. Get around the outside, around the outside. And definitely rub it in a little bit. Don't need to be shy with it. Don't need to just put it on. You kind of want to rub it in. A little bit different than car wax. When you're working with wax, you wipe it on, let it dry, and then buff off. In this case, you rub it in. The more you rub it in, the more effect it's going to have on helping fill in and level off some of those scratches that you're seeing. Like I had said, we could go through, we could sand this whole guitar, we could repaint it. But personally, I don't believe it's worth the time. Yes, this is a nice bass guitar. I believe it'll turn out nice and it'll have another life. But it does not need $300 worth of work when it won't sell for half to two thirds of that. So, have to be realistic. I'm going to come back here real quick wipe any excess that we may have gotten on the chrome double check pickups get anything off the pickups we might have got on there bottom and edges of the neck and then we're going to come back with the buffing wheel again and give a good buffing to this guy Okay, in this phase, it was just the black. We wanted to buff out the black. So I have some of my special finish spray. The finish spray, you always want to take off with a soft rag. We get a soft rag in here. First wipe. Get most of the excess off. And then rub it in really good until it disappears. This will take off any of the compound from before, give it a nice good finish without any swirl marks on it. At this point, the only thing that will be left in the finish is some of the scratches that I had shown you earlier. Um, definitely not too bad, probably from somebody's belt buckles or something, but it's pretty common on older guitars. Get all the way around the sides. And we've got the back nice and clean. We'll flip her over here. Do the same on the front. Only in this case, I don't want to spray all over the chrome in the pickup, so I'm just going to add a little bit on my rag here. I'm going to go around all the black. Make sure to get the edges really good. And then uh, get around the pickups, between the neck, up and down both sides, around the knobs. Just get her nice and clean. Give it that last little bit of shine. I'm not sure if you can see on the camera there, but as we do this, it's just a little bit dull. And then after a few seconds, that'll dry. And you can use a different part of the rag or a different rag, whichever you prefer. 
and go back over again just a little bit more pressure and this will give it that nice final shine and then after this shine she should be like a black mirror that's what we're going for we want her to look nice Doesn't do any good unless it plays nice, but we will get to that shortly. Clean around the pickups again really good, just in case of any overspray or anything from the rag that may have gotten over there. And there she is. One final wipe on the fretboard here. Want to make sure and get um, both sides as I was holding the neck while I was working on it. Usually I don't spray the neck, but I do use my rag uh, with some of the finishing spray on it. And wipe the maple neck really good. Make sure there's no residue on it from people playing it and things like that in the past. Get it nice and clean. Double check the chrome here. Looking pretty snazzy. Next up on the list, I believe she's ready for strings. The pickup adjustment has not changed. Um, they're both tight. The knobs are tight. So I give one more wipe around the knobs here because once we get the knobs on, uh, that's going to be a little hard to get to. And the knobs we picked up for this one, I can show you here if you can see, got some really nice pretty stones in them. So we're going to go ahead and install these. All right, so we've got the knobs here. Very nice stone in there, I must admit. These knobs will go on. They do come with an Allen wrench for tightening them down. So personally, I turn the knobs all the way up and I put the screw downward. And then that way, it's just out of the way aesthetically. When people are playing the guitar, they don't have to look down at that while they're playing. You get it down here, snug that. And you give it just a little bit of an extra turn, maybe quarter to a half to turn so it's nice and tight. As you can see, it works very smoothly. Now we'll get this one on here. Turn knob all the way up. Allen wrench started. Seat it on there where it needs to go. Get this one tightened down. And there we are. New knobs are installed. I'm going to take a closer look at those. Very nice. And next we're going to move on to strings. see new strings are installed we'll trim these a little bit shorter after we tune but we've got the multicolored strings on there actually looks really sharp on the black guitar and these knobs actually are made with abalone so they have abalone inserts and 
the colored strings. I think really sets off the black. We'll have more to come in a few minutes. I'm going to get this down, get the strings tuned up, and then get some pictures. All right, we, we are at the final stage here. We're going to throw a tune on this guitar. Let's see what the bass sounds like done. Way off. Yes. 